Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you all will be doing awesome and fantabulous and fine. So dear student, today in this lecture, we shall cover the important rivers in India, the part number third, in which we will be covering about the Himalayan rivers in India. And after discussing Himalayan rivers in India, we shall cover one interesting topic, which is very important for UPSC, which is also important for any state level competition are for personally JKPSC so the topic which will we cover maximum in this lecture that will be the Indus river system which is most most important for your UPSC so I hope you will give your completely you know focus towards the lecture and I shall try my best to make you understand each and everything which I am going to make you teach today so I hope your attention your focus will be completely towards today's lecture because if you will miss today's lecture then definitely you are going to miss something important for your preparation if you will attend with your keen interest with your kind focus then definitely dear student you are going to learn a wonderful concept which will be completely based on the indus river system so let's have a look before going to discuss indus river system Let's have a look on Himalayan rivers in India. As we all know that Himalayan river systems, because when we were discussing the important rivers in India at that time, I have classified rivers in India into various classified classification in various part in various name. And at that moment, at that instant of time, I made you understand that generally in India, you will find two types of year. One, what we have discussed, what we have studied earlier, that was the Pensular River System. And the most important, which consumes, yeah, which consumes 60% waters in India, that is our Himalayan River Systems. So today in this lecture onwards, we shall be covering about the important rivers which flow in Himalayan side, in Himalayan terrain of India. So today in this lecture, we shall cover one of the most interesting system, river system of India that is known as Indus River System. You must be completely aware regarding to Indus River System, how Indus River System forms, what are the major rivers of Indus River System, their source, their length and their major tributaries. If we talk about personally Indus River, so Indus River has major tributaries. What are the major tributaries of Indus River? We shall be covering. And then after that final stage of this lecture, we shall cover one important treaty which has which had been signed between India and Pakistan on the basis of river, which generally flows in the region of Jammu and Kashmir, or you can say that in the Punjab. So these all rivers. The treaty was signed between India and Pakistan. What was the motto behind treaty and how much percentage of water we people of India can use from them. So these all important concept which I am going to make you teach in this lecture is going to help you in your examination, is going to help in your preparation and definitely while attending this lecture you will be getting great things but having finished this lecture with me then definitely you are going to have a wonderful concept of Indus river system. So let's have a look on the next slide. Firstly we must have to discuss what is Himalayan river system and how many rivers which makes Himalayan river system. So firstly the, this, the river which we are going to discuss in this lecture that is the Indus. Indus river is the main important river but which we are going to cover then after the Ganga and the Brahmaputra comprise the Himalayan river system. I repeat the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. These three major rivers of Himalayan river systems compromise the Himalayan river system. Generally these three rivers have great flow of water and it constitutes approximately 60% of water in India. The Himalayan river the Himalayan river existed even before the formation of Himalayas. According to the historian and the geography of India or geography of Himalaya, 
द हिमालयन रिवर्स विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग हियर नाउ इट हैज फॉर्म्ड अर्लियर देन हिमालयाज इट मीन्स दीज ऑल रिवर्स आर बिफोर फॉर्मुलेटेड इट मीन्स बिफोर द क्लीजन ऑफ इंडियन प्लेट विद द रशियन प्लेट दैट इज नोन एज द एंटीसीडेंट ड्रेनेज वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एंटीसीडेंट ड्रेनेज दैट इज द कोर्स ऑफ रिवर विच इज फॉर्म्ड अर्लियर एंड द रिवर नाउ राइट नाउ फॉलोज द सेम पाथ विच मीन्स द वैली द वैली इन विच द रिवर वर फ्लोइंग दैट टाइम इन पास टाइम बिफोर द कुलीजन ऑफ इंडियन प्लेट विद रशियन प्लेट so before that time the river which had the different path or different course the same path remains till now that is known as your antecedent drainage due to the hard strata or it may be due to the you know hard terrain so that is known as the antecedent drainage if i try to make you understand in hindi antecedent drainage ka matlab ye hota hai ki jo river पहले से ही यानी अगर बात करें बिफोर द क्लीजन ऑफ इंडियन प्लेट की बात करें उससे पहले जिस रास्ते पे वो चल रहा था जो उसका पाथ था जिसका कोर्स था डिटो उसी रास्ते पे अभी तक चले डि टू उसका हार्ड टेरन हो सकता है क्योंकि वहां पे उसको ज्यादा लूज साइल नहीं देखने को मिलेगी इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द हिमालयन रिवर सो यू विल फाइंड हार्ड स्ट्रेटा देयर सो इट विल यू नो इट विल बी रेयर चांस टू जस्ट गेट लूज सॉइल देयर विच यू नो अलाउस रिवर टू जस्ट इंक्रीज He is and its width, so that is known as the antecedent drainage. They were flowing into the Thithia Sea. Now this is an important sea which you must have to understand. What do you mean by Thithia Sea and where it locates? Where it is located? It is important question which I am going to make you understand today. These rivers had their source in now Tibetan region. If you talk about the Thithia Sea, so these all are the conflation or combination of many rivers which form one sea or you can call it also as a ocean which is generally known as tithya sea or non tithya sea means it means you will find in another book with the name of non tithya sea which is now is the main source in the tibetan region now this is the important uh, map which you must have to understand this is the laurasia it get divided into two part one is laurasius and second one is the asia you will find the india in this plateau you will find the india in this plateau so this region will be the china china's region and you will find the tithya sea there with the conflation or the combination of many rivers in the tibetan region allows us the uh, formation of tithya sea this is the gondwana it was the earlier name of you know our globe or you can say that world map and laurasia which by uh, which after bifurcates into the two parts one is the laurasius and second one is the asia and in asia you will find the tithya sea and on some important books are in uh, some another book you will find it as a non tithya sea so which you have to understand and which you have to know about the tithya sea If you would like to know about deeply uh, regarding to Tithya Sea, so you must have to go on Google search about the Tithya Sea. You will find the great content and the great answer from there, which will clear your doubts regarding to Tithya Sea. Because many of you have heard first time this Tithya Sea. Now let's have a look on some important points of Himalayan rivers. If we talk about the Himalayan rivers, as I stated earlier, the Himalayan rivers. forms the deep gorge which have compaction which have hard strata gorges of the indus the satluj and the brahmaputra like that there are many other important rivers if we talk about the brahmaputra river if we talk about the chenab river so these all rivers have deep gorges as like indus satluj and brahmaputra clearly indicate that these rivers are older than himalayas if you want to know about the question if you have one question in your mind uh, dear sir how can you say that these all rivers are older than the himalayas these deep gorges which has ha, these deep gorges which have hard strata these all indicate that these rivers are older than himalayas as we have talked about the indus satluj brahmaputra as many rivers as like them 
दे कंटिन्यू टू फ्लो थ्रू आउट द बिल्डिंग फेज ऑफ द हिमालयाज वट डू यू मीन बाई बिल्डिंग फेज एवरीबडी हैज मे बी दिस क्वेश्चन इन योर माइंड बिल्डिंग फेज वेन द हिमालयाज वर फॉर्मुलेटिंग दियर बैंक राइज इज डीपली इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द हिमालयन रिवर्स सो हिमालयन रिवर्स बैंक राइजिंग स्टीपली वाइल द बैट्स वेंट लोअर एंड लोअर ड्यू टू वर्टिकल इरोजन बिकॉज द फॉर्मेशन आर द हैपनिंग ऑफ वर्टिकल इरोजन मेक द लोअर बैड मेक द लोअर बैड ऑफ दीज रिवर्स सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द वर्टिकल डाउन कटिंग वॉज सिग्निफिकेंट एट दैट टाइम वेन द वर्टिकल इरोजन हैपन एट दैट टाइम वर्टिकल डाउन कटिंग वॉज सिग्निफिकेंट एंड ऑकरिंग द इट वॉज ऑकरिंग एट ए रेट फास्टर देन द राइजिंग ऑफ हिमालयाज दस कटिंग डीप गॉड्स इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द वर्टिकल डाउन इट मीन्स द लैंड वॉज कटिंग डाउन साइड इन टू द डाउन स्टेटा and these were cutting significantly with a high speed with a faster speed than the rising of himalayas himalayas were rising slowly due to the formation of what due to the formation of beds inside the soil inside the earth and the erosion which happened that time it was faster as comparison to the rising of himalayas so that's why the deep gorges of these all himalayan rivers have formed and they all consist the antecedent drainage which means the drainage which they have initially the same drainage they all rivers are following now at a time now thus man of the himalayan rivers are typical example of antecedent drainage which i have made you understand earlier i hope your concept had has got cleared completely from the antecedent drainage if you would like to know again the antecedent drainage so it is very simple to understand the antecedent drainage is nothing else but that is the path which the river made earlier when it started flowing first time the same path if the river is following now so you can call it as a antecedent drainage of indus antecedent drainage of brahmaputra antecedent drainage of indus is it clear to everyone i hope so this point is clear to everyone now let's move forward with the important lecture because today if we talk about today's lecture the main important sinusoid point of this lecture is indus river system so dear student this river is nothing but everything if you want to know about the indus river system according to you it's nothing but according to me and according to upsc according to the government exams it is the backbone of competitive exam and it is the backbone of himalayan rivers because indus river is known as the backbone of leh ladakh if you try to know if you want to know about the various name of indus because according to terran according to place the indus is called as different names so if you will uh, just come to know about the sanskrit name of indus river that is sindhu in sanskrit indus is called as sindhu and if you want to know about the name by which the greek call indus as in the greek we call indus as a synthos so this is the important point which you must have to keep in your mind in sanskrit we call indus as a sindhu in greek we call it as a synthos in latin we call it as sindhus sindus we call in latin as a sindus so now it's time to know uh, about the major rivers of indus river system its source and what is the length of that particular river which we are discussing here the namely indus river and what are the length of his tributaries because its tributaries you will find and definitely i have uh, maybe completely covered many of them but now today in this lecture we shall be covering about the important points of indus river system tributaries and if you will find from where the indus river generates or originates so in this glacier you will find on kalyasa range which is very closed to mansarovar lake at uh, the height of your you can say that and if you will calculate the complete length of indus river river you will find 2880 km length of indus river so now it's time to have a deep knowledge and deep you know focus on the concept of indus river formulation how the indus river forms so these all important rivers which you are able to see on the screen your screen now it's it you everybody knows this is the china and the mansarovar locates here 
let me understand let me make you understand simply you will find the mans rover here and from where the indus river originates that name is bhogchar what is the name of there bhogchar chu bhogchar chu in the tibetan range region this is the tibetan region from where you will find the formation or the origination of indus river so i will try to make you understand with the help of wonderful map i will let you know where india's the first place where indus come inside the india in the ladakh what is the name of that place and having gone ahead we will be continually knowing about the important place from where it turns from where it makes depression or it makes steep valley and from where it you know just meets into the arabian sea so everything we are going to discuss but you must have to aware about these all important rivers because these all are the tributaries of indus which meets indus at mithyan kota in punjab in punjab uh, east punjab we can say that in pa pa pakistan ka jo punjab hai in punjab of pakistan you will find the mithyan kota there so wahan pe aapko indus river ki jitni bhi tributaries hai you will get to know there because these all river joins indus there at mithyan kota if you will talk about the important tributary that is jhelum from where the jhelum river originates i have also discussed if you will look at the important rivers of jammu and kashmir and if you would like to check the playlist please go through inside the description of this lecture you will find there the link of important rivers in jammu and kashmir must watch these all videos because from these videos you will get different concept to learn then after important rivers that is chenab which originates from the himachal then after we will uh, uh, know about the important uh, origination point of ravi river bias which is you know main important river in himachal pradesh then satluj which is also originated from the nearest up borit bokhar chua pass in tibetan range so with the elevation of approximately 4000 meter above sea level so these all rivers formulation makes the indus river system so let's have a look on the important points of indus river system if you will find what is the total length of indus river in india so you will find 710 km length in india this is the indus river length in india if you will uh, talk about the important tributaries of indus river that is jhelum which originates from the varinag and the total length of jhelum river is 720 km ahead we are going to discuss about them in very brief then after important tributary that is chinab which originates from the baralcha pass of himachal pradesh the total length of chinab is 1180 km then after we have to discuss about the ravi river it originates from near rohtang pass having complete total length of 725 km then bias which is also known as vyas river bis river or bias river originates from near rohtang pass the total length of bis river is 460 km then we will discuss satluj satluj originates from the nearest of mans rover lake that is rakaz lake having total length of 400 1450 km but you will find 1000 which means 1050 km in india what is the total length of satluj in india that is 1050 km now let's have a look on the important origination point of indus river if you talk about the indus river system the indus river which is the world's which forms the world's largest river basin and it is also known as sindhu as i have discussed earlier the river flows through china from where the indus river comes the indus river flows through china which is in tibetan region in india also then after in pakistan it means this indus river system comprises of three important countries one is china in the tibetan range and you will find indus river there in india you will find in jammu and kashmir and then after it enters into the pakistan and after entering to pakistan it drains out in arabian sea where it drains out in arabian sea have a patience we are going to learn about these all things in tibet it is known as singhi khambi or loin smooth 
So this is important question for you, an important answer, important point to know and keep in your uh, book or in your notebook. In Tibet, what is the name of Indus River? The in Tibet, the name of Indus River is Singai Khambai or you can call it as a Lion's Moth. So this is the important point. Now have a wonder and deep concept of Indus River. India got her name from Indus. This is the important and the major question. From where the India got her name? This is the important point which you must have to know and it is very 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 common asking question in any competitive exam. India got her name from Indus. It means India ka name jo usko mila hai, usne Indus river se liya hai. And then after you will come to know one important civilization, the Indus Valley civilization was born around this river. So the Indus Valley civilization you will find in history that has burned around this river. This river. It originates, we are talking here about the only Indus river. It originates from a glacier as I had discussed earlier near Bokhar Chu in the Tibetan region with having an altitude height of 4164 meter above sea level in the Kailash mountain range near the Mansarovar lake. You all are very familiar with one yatra, one pilgrimage yatra that is Manmesh or Kailash yatra. Generally the people from various part of India just go there for the pilgrimage site and the Kailash mountain range you will find near the Monsrover lake which comes under the Tibetan range with having altitude of 4000 164 meter from mean sea level so from where indus river originates so indus river originates from bokhar chu in tibetan region it flows into north to west direction from its source which is the glacier of kalyas range which i had made you understand earlier kalyas range in tibet near lake mansarovar from where originates it originates from bokchara uh, bokhar chu in tibetan region but there is one glacier, important glacier, namely Kalyas Range. And Kalyas Range which comes nearest of Mansarovar Lake. And then after it will be completely till the Nanga Parvat Range. So I will be letting you know about the Nanga Parvat Range. It is, uh, uh, you know, in the LOC of India between Pakistan. Now if you talk about the complete length of Indus, as I have made you understand approximately, 2880 kilometer but if you will try to know about the complete length from basin from uh, apex to the bottom you will find approximately 2900 kilometer length of indus river and its total drainage area is about 1 crore 16 lakh 5000 square kilometer you will find you will find 1 crore 16 lakh 5000 square kilometer of its total drainage area and which mostly comes in the half plains of semi-arid plains of Pakistan. We will be discussing about the important places from where the river passes into the Arabian Sea and that comes in Pakistan. So we are going to have a wonderful concept. Let's have a look firstly from where the river originates. I hope you will try to understand. It originates from, this is the main point, this is the Bhokar Chu Pass, Bhokar Chu region in Tibetan region from where the Indus get originate, gets originated. So from where it starts its journey and having moved forward with having the attitude of altitude height of 4164 meter in the Kailash mountain range near the Mansrovar lake. The river flows northwest and enters into Ladakh. The river flows and enters into the Ladakh region. This is the important point. If you have notebook and pen with you, must write this name which I am going to mention here. The river flows northwest and enters into Ladakh region in India from a place called where the Indus comes in India in Ladakh. The place from where it enters that is known as Dam. Chok, D E M, Dam Chok. Must write that point. Dam Chok, this is the place from where the Indus enters into Ladakh, the place namely as Dam Chok. 
सो फ्रॉम डैम चौक द फ्रॉम डैम चौक विच इज इन लद्दाख इट द इंडस रिवर कम्स इन साइड द लद्दाख एंड आफ्टर इंटरिंग इंडिया इंडस रिवर फ्लोज इन बिटवीन कैरोक्रम एंड लद्दाख रेंज एज वी ऑल नो दैट दीज पार्ट आर द कैरोक्रम रेंज पार्ट दीज आर द लद्दाख रेंज यू विल फाइंड द इंडस रिवर विद मोस्टली विद द लद्दाख रेंज बिकॉज इन लद्दाख रेंज यू विल फाइंड मेनी इंपॉर्टेंट माउंटेन्स देर सो इंडस रिवर फ्लोज इन बिटवीन इट्स फ्लोज इन बिटवीन दिस इज कैरोक्रम रेंज दिस इज लद्दाख रीजन दिस इज द लद्दाख रेंज सो यू विल फाइंड इन बिटवीन दिस इंपॉर्टेंट इंडस रिवर एट ए प्लेस कार ढूंगती द रिवर टेक्स ए शार्प साउथ वेस्ट टर्न एंड कट्स थ्रो द लद्दाख रेंज फ्राम देयर फ्राम देयर इट टेक्स यू नो हैविंग जस्ट ट्रेवल्ड आर कम्स हियर दिस इज द प्लेस ऑफ ढूंगती डी यू एन जी टी आई डी यू एन जी टी आई ढूंगती ढूंगती फ्राम वेयर द रिवर टेक्स ए शार्प साउथ वेस्ट टर्न एंड कट्स थ्रो द लद्दाख रेंज एंड देन टेक्स ए नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न कोर्स then it takes a north western course and continues to flow towards the lay region of ladakh along with the ladakh range so up to there you will find it it's it's this is the known as the uh, uh, you know dungti d u n g t i dungti the name from where it takes a sharp turn and it cuts th through the ladakh range and it takes the north west course and continues to flow towards the lay region of ladakh after reaching lay river continues to flow the north western course and it makes the north western course and reaches the town of batalik the town of batalik you will find here batalik what is the name of town in ladakh batalik batalik which is in the kargil district then after it will join and it joins the jaskar river at leh because If you will find the many tributaries of Indus, you will find many tributes like uh, Zanskar River, uh, uh, Siok River, and you will find many more important tributaries of these all uh, Indus River system. And near Skadru, you will find the Skadru here. Near Skad Sakardu, Sakardu, it is joined by the Siok at an elevation of twenty seven hundred meter. then after now the indus river enters into baltistan region this is the baltistan region this is the baltistan region from where the indus enters into the baltistan and the city from where indus enters into baltistan is known as skadru s k a r d u skardu skardu so this is the important point which you must have to know because this is the place from where enters enters into the baltistan and it continues to flow northwest towards the city of gilgit upon reaching the city of gilgit having reached in the gilgit it turns west it turns west as you can see it turns west and then fully enters the northwest frontier provinces of pakistan then you will say this is the northwest frontier provinces of pakistan which is commonly known as khyber pakhtun khawa This place is known as the Khyber Pakhtun Khawa, and it is also known as the North West Frontier Provinces of Pakistan. Then, after the Kabul River empties into the Indus River near Atok, you will find the place here. From you will find the place here where the Kabul River merges into the Indus River. The place where the Kabul River. merge into indus river is known as atok now it is in pakistan which is the main river in eastern afghanistan and the khyber pakhtun khawa provinces of pakistan because you will find all these region as a khyber pakhtun khawa provinces of pakistan the river then takes a south western slope it is the little bit slope which the this river takes and it continues flow across the khyber pakhtun provinces this is the khyber pakhtun provinces and it then flows through the plain in western and southern punjab provinces of pakistan this is the southern and northern provinces of pakistan which is also known as the punjab in pakistan this is you know this is the you will find the punjab region of pakistan so the river it takes the little bit northwest direction slope and 
it uh, just continues it uh, remains continually continuously flow across the khyber pakhtun khawa provinces then flows through the plain in western and southern provinces of pakistan the river continues to head towards the sindhu provinces of pakistan so you will find the sindhu provinces this is the sindhu provinces if i will try to make you understand the sindhu provinces so you will come to know about this is the sindhu provinces of pakistan where we will get the another hyderabad which you have one hyderabad you will find in india that is important hyderabad and it is in india but you will find one you also finds one important hyderabad city in the sindh provinces of pakistan just above mithan coat this is just above mithan coat you will find the sindhu this is the word sindhu the indus river receives from the panjhat this is the important term which you have to know which you will come to know in upcoming slides this is the panjhat 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 means jahan se iska naam punjab padta hai jiska matlab hota hai panch river ki conflation se ek river banta hai jisko punjab bhi kehte hain aap pakistan ke andar bhi aur india ke andar bhi aapko dekhne ko milega it is also commonly known as panchat i am going to make you understand because here the water gets accumulated from the different streams of indus tributaries like the jhelum the chenab the ravi the bees and the satluj you will find the accumulation of water here then what you will find here this is the mithan this is the panchat panchat means the conflation of five rivers at a point from where it merges into the indus river the sindh province river accumulates a lot of sedimentation because in sindh region of pakistan you will find the plain area so from uh, there this sindhu indus river accumulates a lot of sedimentation sedimentation from the indus river delta before draining into the arabian sea near karachi if we talk about the point from where the indus river drains out in arabian sea that is the karachi you will you have to know about the karachi and that is in pakistan the blind indus river dolphin you will find one important species in indus river that is the blind indus river dolphin blind b l i n d blind indus river dolphin this is the important point which you must have to write on your notebook you will find indus river dolphin a sub species of dolphin you will find only in indus river not uh, any anywhere else you will find that thing so that was the conflation then after if you will uh, know about the this is the satluj river it also originates from the nearest of mansarovar lake then after it enters into the various parts of the our, our state of himachal punjab and then it takes steep west direction and then definitely it enters into the pakistan and it will uh, you know just it merges into the chenab river and then definitely chenab rivers you know drains out in indus river this is the ravi you will find in the you will find its origin, origination point from the himachal nearest of uh, buruchla pass uh, bees then it is the south and east direction from where these two rivers originate one one you will find ravi and second you will find the second you will find there you know uh, the bees river there and the chenab river it also you know originates from the himachal then it comes into the uh, jammu and kashmir from border area of jammu and kashmir and uh, after there are two streams which i am going to discuss in upcoming slides and then after uh, the river uh, jhelum the river jhelum just enters into the chenab and it uh, consume it you know it has it just makes a huge volume of water and having drained out uh, ahead the ravi river joins chenab then satluj river joins chenab and finally the river chenab joins with the many tributaries like jhelum ravi and satluj bees at mithan kota punjab where it is known as panjhad where it is known as panjnad panjnad panch means five and nad means river so you will come to know about that so this was the important river system of india now we will look major tributaries of indus river this is jhelum river chenab river ravi river bias river and satluj river now we will look with the depth of knowledge and depth of the points of these all tributaries now firstly we will discuss about the jhelum river i have also taught you about the jhelum river if you will check the playlist you will come to know uh, if you will check the description the link is given below in the description must check the description and get good knowledge of about jhelum river because 
in that lecture i have discussed very briefly about the jhelum river the jhelum has its source from where it originates it has the source of spring in atwerinag atwerinag the jhelum has its source from where the jhelum river originates in the south eastern part of kashmir valley it flows northwards into walur lake which is in the northwestern part of kashmir valley so from walur lake it changes its course into southward direction if you talk about the jhelum river so jhelum river takes the north or southwards direction from walur lake at baramula the river enters a gorge in the hills so nearest to baramula you will find the gorge from where it enters into gorge in the hills then you will find the important and the largest tributary of jhelum river that is kishan ganga which is also known as the neelam river so this is the important points what is the uh, which one is the largest tributary of jhelum because jhelum is known as the lifeline of srinagar so the kishan ganga is the largest tributary of jhelum river the river from steep sides narrow gorge through peer panjar range below baramula you will come to know about the peer panjar range at muzaffarabad the river takes a sharp hairpin bend this is means which is like that hairpin bend in southward direction then after it forms the indian pakistan boundary for 170 km you will find the jhelum river flowing up to 170 km which separates the boundary of india and pakistan and immerses at the potwar plateau near meerpur it immerses into the chinab river at potwar plateau near meerpur after flowing through the spurs after flowing through the spurs after flowing through the spurs of the salt range it debouches debouches which means emerge from a confined space then into it get merged into the chinab on the plains near the city of jhelum you will find many important cities there it joins the chinab at tirmu this is the important point which you must have to keep in your on your notes definitely keep in your notes from where the jhelum river meets chinab so that place is known as tirmu this is the tirmu place where chinab have the confluence of jhelum river the river is navigable for about 160 km out of total length of 724 km instead of complete length of jhelum river the jhelum river length is 724 km out of 724 km you will find the navigable area of jhelum river that is 160 km ab yahan pe ek ko aapko main term samjha deta hu what do you mean by navigable navigable ka matlab hota hai ki ships jo jahaz hote hain pani ke wo kahan kahan tak iske andar transport kar sakte hain travel kar sakte hain waterways ke facilities kya rehti hai jahan pe kishtiyon ko ya jahazu ko chalaya jata hai that is known as the navigable area of that river the water of the jhelum are allocated to pakistan as i discussed earlier we are going to have it important knowledge of treaty which had been signed between india and pakistan the waters of the jhelum river are allocated to pakistan under the terms of indus water treaty it ends in a confluence with the chinab in pakistan because when it merge in to the chinab it ends its confluence with the chinab in pakistan which is the place where the chinab joins the or jhelum joins the chinab that is tirmu now this is the chinab river i hope you all are familiar with the chinab river the chinab originates from near the baralcha pass everybody knows that is from the himachal pradesh near lahul spiti district of the zaskar range there you will find two important streams in opposite side of this pass that is the baralcha pass one comes from the uh, opposite side in it is these two important tributaries are originated from the opposite sides of this pass namely one is chandra and second one is the bhaga and if you will find its headquarter at an altitude of 4900 meter above sea level the united stream having confluence and having combination of two important stream that one is chandra and second one is the bhaga these two important confluence of river makes one important river which is commonly known as chandra bhaga flows in the northwest direction through the pangi valley in which valley it flows it flows from the pangi valley and it passes through the pangi valley parallel to which is parallel to the par, uh, parallel to the peer panjal range then it cuts a deep gorge near kishtwar the place from where it enters into jammu and kashmir that is padar that is worth that is padar and the place where the these two rivers the place 
where these two important streams combines that is tandi that is what that is tandi and as i mentioned you will check important link in the given in the description from where you will be getting complete knowledge of chinab river then it enters into the plain which is near at the knur area of jammu and kashmir from here it throw the plains of pakistan punjab and then it reaches up to the pan panch nad panch means five and nad means rivers where it joins the satluj after receiving the waters of jhelum and ravi rivers the waters of the chinab are allocated to pakistan as we have discussed about the indus water treaty and which we are going to have early uh, after upcoming slides so the main important dam which you have which has been constructed on the important river of chinab that is bhaglia dam has been constructed on this river and salal hydroelectric power project which you find in riyasi and bhaglia dam in ramban district so these are two important hydroelectric projects which you will see on the chinab river and that is the important current affairs question the river is crossed in jammu and kashmir by the world's highest railways bridge namely chinab bridge which is the world's highest railway bridge so that comes on the chinab river so these all are the important points of chinab river now it's time to have a look on ravi river so the ravi river originates from dholadhar range of the himalayas in the chamba district of himachal pradesh from where the ravi river originates it originates from the dholadhar range which is in chamba dist chamba district of himachal pradesh so ravi river has its source in kullu hills you will find important source of ravi river in kullu hills near the rohtang pass in himachal pradesh state after crossing chamba it takes south west turn and cuts a deep gorge in dholadhar range then it enters into the punjab plains the from where it enters into punjab the place where it enters into punjab plain that is madhopur what is the name of that place that is the name normally commonly known as madhopur and it later enters into the pakistan below amritsar yani amritsar se hote hue ye pakistan mein enter hota hai it debouches debouches nothing it merges into the chinab a little above rangpur in pakistan punjab where it debouches which means it merges into chinab that is the name of place that is rangpur in pakistan punjab the water of indus river are also allocated to india under the indus water treaty the major multiple purpose project you will find on the ravi river that is ranjit sagar dam and i have discussed about this uh, dam very briefly and must check the link given below in the description and you will find it is also known as the ranjit sagar dam is also known as the thian dam because of the local name because there is one village namely thian and the people from there commonly call it as a thian dam and it is known as the uh, thian dam and it is located in thian village then you will come to know about the chamba town chamba town is situated on the right, right bank of the river that is the important point chamba town is situated on which river that is the right bank of river ravi now have a look on the bias river the bias river originates from the rohtang pass near the rohtang pass at height of 4062 meter above mean sea level on the southern end of the peer panjal range you will find here the peer panjal range and it is closer to the source of ravi because if ravi river originates from the chamba then definitely there are nothing uh, there is not a huge distance between these two passes these two points from where these two river originates these two rivers originate from the rohtang pass at a height of 4062 meter above sea level and the panjal peer panjal range you will find there in, in the into the southern side and it is the very closest to the ravi or rivers origination point it also crosses the dholadhar range and it takes a south west direction then after it will you will come to know about it meets the satluj river at hareke that is the important point which you must have to keep or write on your notebook that is hareke which comes in punjab where the river satluj meets the bias river or you can say that the bias river meets satluj river at hareke the total length of this river is 460 km and the river covers 256 km through himachal pradesh If you would like to know about the complete river of Bias River, that is complete river of Bias River is 460 km, but you will find 256 km length of Bias River in Himachal Pradesh. These are the important rivers. And now, if you would like to know about the tourist resorts of Manali, 
is situated on the right banks of the river Bias. There is commonly known as the river Bias, which comes from the Rotang Pass of the Bias Mountains. This is the important river that is Satluj River. It also originates from the Mans River Rakas Lakes, which is comes uh, in the western Tibet at a height of 4570 meter above sea level within 80 kilometers of the source of the Indus which means it is also the close to the origination point of Indus river because nothing there you will not find a huge distance between Indus river origination and the Satluj river origination because if you will find the difference you will find only 80 kilometer difference there like the Indus it takes a northwesterly course up to the Shipkila this is the important point which comes in the Tibetan range of China then it enters into the Himachal Pradesh boundary where it enters from where it enters into Himachal Pradesh that is Shipkila Pass that is what that is the Shipkila name it cuts deep gorge where it pirates the great Himalaya and the outer Himalayan other Himalayan ranges before entering into the Punjab plain it cuts a, uh, it cuts a gorge in Nena Devi Dhar you will find one important mountain or peak that is known as the Nena Devi Dhar in Punjab in Himachal Pradesh where the famous Bhakra Dam has been constructed. You will find in Bilaspur. This dam has been in Bilaspur district of Himachal Pradesh. You will find the Bhakra Dam which has been constructed or if you will try to know about the Bhakra Dam. So you will find it is the highest dam of India. After and Asia's highest dam, Asia's largest dam you will find and second highest dam in Asia you will find and second highest dam in world you will find that. After entering into the plain at Roop Nagar which is also known as the Ropnar, it is in Punjab. It turns westward then join its the Bias River at Harake from near Firozpur and Fazilika. This is two important place which comes in Pakistan which forms the boundary between India and Pakistan nearly 120 km. During its onward journey, the river, the river Satluj receives collective drainage of Ravi, Chinab and Shalem river. It joins the Indus a few km above Mithan Kut. This is the main important point where the, all these all tributaries join the Indus that is known as the Mithan Kut. If you, if somebody or if you will find an important question in competitive exam where these all important tributaries of Indus river joins Indus that is the Mithan Kot in Punjab. After total length of 1450 kilometer of Satluj, it flows for 1050 kilometer in Indian territory. The complete the overall length of Satluj river is 1450 kilometer but if you will find the complete length in Indian territory that you will find 1050 kilometer. Now it is the final slides of, it is not a final, it is a second last slide of today's lecture that is Indus Water Treaty. If you will look about the Indus Water Treaty, this is the important treaty which has been signed between India and Pakistan when it has been signed on 19th of September 1960. This is the important date which you must have to write on your notebook on the top of the page because this date is often asked in competitive exam. This is the treaty of waters which has been signed between India and Pakistan. The waters of the Indus river system are also shared by India and Pakistan according to the Indus water treaty which has been signed between two countries on 19th of September 1960. According to this treaty, India can utilize only 20% of its total discharge of water. This is the important point. How much percent? Only 20% of total discharge of water the Indian can use from the Indus. This is the Indus river system. In Indus river system, if Indian wants to join, Indian want to utilize the water of Indus river system, that is only 20%, nothing more. Because under the treaty which had been signed between India and Pakistan in 1960, you will find all the waters of these three rivers, namely Ravi, Satluj and Bias, and which is eastern rivers. These all are eastern rivers. Satluj, Ravi and the Bias are the eastern rivers. These were allocated to India. These were allocated to India and because these has these all rivers have very less amount of water, it consumes only 25 20% of Indus rivers systems water. 
while in other side if you will look, look there you will find the western rivers namely punjab uh, namely indus jhelum and the chenab so these three main important river you can call it them as a major river of jammu and kashmir or india so these all were allocated to pakistan except for specified domestic non consumptive agriculture use permitted to india only these all are the major you know places where you can use the water of these river which flows western side of the you know these are comes under the western rivers the jhelum indus and the chenab only you can utilize their water in domestic purpose non consumptive you non consumptive agriculture and it is provided according to the treaty which had been signed between india and pakistan in 1969 60 so india has also been given the right to generate and if you uh, would like to know about the rights which had been given in this treaty to india india has also been given the right to generate hydro electricity through the run of the river ror which means run of the river so you will find more, uh, more than five six uh, important hydroelectric project on chenab river then also you will find some mini and hydro electric power projects on indus and jhelum also so the this city allowed india to just generate hydro electricity from these important rivers that is western rivers which sub, uh, subject to specified criteria for design and operation is unrestricted we cannot stop the water as the uh, indus uh, treaty signed which had been signed between india and pakistan so these all were the important points regarding to indus river system himalayan river system and just like today's lecture we shall be covering about the important river system that is the ganga river system brahmaputra river system so slowly slowly we will try to cover all the important rivers of india so thank you very much for your kind cooperation and i hope it was really magnificent lecture for you all dear learner if you haven't subscribed this youtube channel a bright avishkar must subscribe this channel because you will find the great content and the great lectures from there and then after if you haven't pressed the bell icon must press the bell icon so that you will never miss an update from bright avishkar and let's have a meeting again in the next